We've already seen that if we were to start with the differential equation, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to y, and we had the initial condition that y of zero is equal to one, that the particular solution to this, given this initial conditions, is y of x is equal to e to the x, or I guess we could just say y is equal to e to the x if we didn't want to write it with the function notation. And that's all fair and well, and this works out well. This is a separable differential equation, and we can integrate things quite easily. But as you will see as you go further in the world of differential equations, most differential equations are not so easy to solve. In fact, many of them are impossible to solve using analytic methods. And so given that, what do you do? You've nicely described some phenomena, model some phenomena using differential equations, but if you can't solve it analytically, do you just give up? And the answer to that question is no. You do not just give up because we now have computers. And computers are really good at numerical methods. Numerical methods for approximating and giving us a sense of what the solution to a differential equation might look like. And so how do we do that? Well, in this video, we can explore one of the most straightforward numerical methods for approximating a particular solution. So what we do is, so let me draw a little table here. So a little table here. And so, actually let me give myself some, I'm gonna do it over here on the left hand side. So, a little table. So, x and then y, with x, y, and then dy, dx. And you could set up a table like this to, to create a slope field. You could just pick all the, you could sample x's and y's in the, car, in, the, in the xy plane and then figure out for a first order differential equation like this, what is the slope going to be at that point? And you could construct a slope field. And we're gonna do something kind of related, but instead of trying to construct a slope field, we're gonna start with this initial condition. We know that y of zero is equal to one. We know that the particular solution to this differential equation contains this point. So we're gonna start with that point. So we're gonna start with x is equal to zero, and let me do this in a different color. We're gonna start with x is equal to zero, y is equal to one, which is that point right over there. And we're gonna say, well, okay, what is the, what is the derivative at that point? Well, we know the derivative at any point that, or for any solution to this differential equation, the derivative is going to be equal to the y value. So in this case, the derivative is going to be equal to y. It's going to be equal to one. And in general, if the derivative, just like what we saw in the case of slope fields, as long as the derivative is expressed as a function of x's and y of x's, then you can figure out what the, what the slope of the tangent line will be at that point. And so you say, okay, there's, there's a slope of one at that point, so I can depict it like that. And instead of just keep doing that at a bunch of points, we'll say, okay, well, let's just, I, we know that the slope is changing, or it's probably changing for, for most cases, but let's just assume it's fixed until our next x, and then use that assumption to estimate what the next y would be. So what am I talking about here? So when I talk about the next x, we're talking about, well, let's just step, let's say, say for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna have a delta x of one a change in x of one. So we're gonna step from x equals zero now. We're gonna now step from that to x is equal to one. So we're now gonna to go to, actually let me not use that, I use that yellow color already for the actual graph or for the actual e to the x. So now let's say x is equal to one. So we've, our delta x is one. So we've just added one here. And what we can do in our, in our little approximation scheme here is, well let's just assume that that slope was constant over over that interval. So where does that get us to? Well, if y was at one, and if I have a slope of one, for one more, for one increase in x, I'm gonna increase by y by one. So then y is going to increase by one, and it's going to get to two. And we see that point right over there. And you already might see where this is going. Now, if this were actually a point on the curve, on the solution, and if it was satisfying this, what would then the derivative be? Well, the derivative is equal to y. The slope of the tangent line is going to be equal to y. So in this case, the slope of the tangent line is now going to be equal to two. And we could depict that, let me depict that in magenta here. So it is going to be, it is going to be two. So it's gonna look, so the slope of the tangent line there is going to be two. And so what does that tell us? Well, if we step, if we step by our delta x one more, so now our x is equal to two, 
what should the corresponding what should the corresponding y be? Well, let's see. Now for every one that we increase in the x in the x direction, we should increase 2 in the y direction because the slope is 2. So the very next one should be 4. y is equal to 4. So we could imagine we have now kind of had a constant slope and we get to that point right over there. And now we can do the same thing. Well, if we assume dy dx based on the differential equation has to be equal to y, we say, okay, the slope of the tangent line there is going to be the same thing as y. It's going to be 4. And so if we step our x up by 1, if we increment our x by 1 again, once again, we just decided to increment by 1. We could have incremented by 10. We could have incremented by 0 0.01. And you could guess which one's going to give you a more accurate result. But if we step up by 1 now and our slope is 4, well, we're going to increase by, if we increased x by 1, we're going to increase y by 4. So we are going to get, we are going to get to 8. And so we are at the point 3, comma 8, which is right over here. And so for this next stretch, the next stretch is going to is going to look like that. And as you can see, just by doing this, we have been able to approximate what the particular solution looks like. And you might say, hey, Sal, well, you know, that's not so good of an approximation. And my reply to you is, well, yeah, I mean, depends on what your goals are. But I did this by hand. I didn't even do this using a computer. And, I, and because I wanted to do it by hand, I took fairly large delta x steps. If I wanted a better approximation, I could have lowered the delta x. And let's do that. So let's take another scenario. So let's do another scenario where instead of delta x equal 1, let's say delta x equals 1 half. So once again, x, y, and the derivative of y with respect to x. So now let's say I want to take, so we know this first point, given it, we're given this initial condition. When x is 0, y is 1, and so the slope of the tangent line is going to be 1. But then if we're incrementing by 1 half, so then when x is I'll just write it as 0 0.5. 0 0.5. What is our new what is our new y going to be? Well, we're going to assume that our slope from this to this is this slope right over here. So our slope is 1. So if we increase x by 0.5, we're going to increase y by 0.5 and we're going to get to 1.5. So we're going to when we get 0.5, 1.5, we get to that point right over there. Actually, you're having trouble seeing that. This stuff right over here is this point right over here. And now our new slope is going to be 1.5, which is going to look, which is going to look like, which is going to look like, actually not quite that steep. I don't want to overstate how good of an approximation is, and it's starting to get a little bit messy, but it's going to look something like that. And what you would see if you kept doing this process, so if your slope is now 1.5, when you increment x by another 0.5, where well you get to 1. So now if you increment by if you increment by 0.5 and your slope is 1.5, your y is going to incre increment by half of that, by 0.75, and so you're going to get to 2.25. So now you get to 1, 2.25, which is this point right over here. And once again, this is a better approximation. Remember, in the original one, y of 1, you know, should be equal to e. y of 1 in the actual solution should be equal to e, 2.7, on and on and on and on and on. Now in this one, y of y of y of 1 got us to 2. In this one, y of 1 got us to 2.25. Once again, closer to the actual reality, closer to e. Instead of stepping by 0.5, if we stepped by 0.1, we would get even closer. If we stepped by if we stepped by 0.0001, we would get even closer and closer and closer. So there's a bunch of interesting things here. This is actually how most differential equations or, or techniques that are derived from this or that are based on numerical methods similar to this are how most differential equations get solved. And even if it's not the exact same solution or the same method, that the idea that most differential equations are actually solved or I guess you could say simulated with a numerical method because most of them actually cannot be solved in analytical form. Now you might be saying, hey, well, what, what method is this one right over here called? Well, this right over here is called Euler's. Euler's method, after the famous Leonard Euler. Euler's, Euler's method. And not only actually is this one a good way of, uh, of approximating what the solution to this or any differential equation is, but actually for this differential equation in particular, you can actually even use this to 
find uh, to find e with more and more and more precision. Anyway, hopefully you found that exciting.